Tom, a.k.a. Gereon here for Star Frontiers Gamer. And uh, today we're going to be covering playing Dralocytes. Now, there is no substitution for reading the one-page species description in the rulebook. Uh, it, it's actually very well condensed, and there's a lot of information in there. And uh, you, you just can't bypass that. But we also wrote a new player primer that was published in the Frontier Explorer. Frontier Explorer issue number 21. And uh, so the new player primer is in here. <clears throat> and that's basically our script for today. <laughs> So, the canon material, uh, the Dralocytes, because of their appearance, have been called blobs. Uh, and this has led to the misconception that they do not have a distinct body structure. The Dralocyte body is composed of a core, the head, and appendages. The core holds numerous small hearts and other internal organs. And the central nerve bundle acts as a brain. Uh, due to the composition of the core, it is not possible, my ruling, to store items of equipment like a gun within their body or to flatten, this is not my ruling, or to flatten the core so that a drolocyte could pass under a door. Now, uh, decades ago, one of the players uh, wanted to board a starship and uh, they had to secure all their weapons in the weapons locker near the bridge. He did not like this, and so he was like, I'm going to stick the gun inside my body. And, you know, and at the time, just to keep the game moving, I just said, yeah, sure. Uh, but after thinking about it, uh, and, after, you know, kind of digging around, looking and thinking, uh, I, I have since ruled against that for a number of reasons. One, um, I really don't think the internal structure of a is going to allow for this. Two, it really poses a threat of sepsis, um, you know, infection. And so I, you know, if you, if, if I did allow it, it's like almost by game master fiat, there is going to, this, this character is going to have an infection that the medic needs to treat and it's not going to be pleasant. So that would go down. Um, you know, number two, uh, at the time we were just beefing up airport security because it was after nine 11, but today we have these scanners that are just so much more capable and I just don't think that at this far advanced in the future, in the science fiction setting, you're going to be able to get away with that. Plus, they're going to be like, we should double check that site. He looks a little lumpy there. <laughs> I bet he's hiding a gun inside him. I mean, it, 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 I just so that that's my thinking. Uh, you can, of course, make a different decision. Uh, the head sits atop the core, and it can stretch and bend almost in almost the same manner as the appendages. Uh, it holds the eye spots, which are nerve bundles close to the surface of the skin, and these allow for black and white vision. There is a bellows-like voice box that allows for speech, every, everything from a whisper all the way up to a booming yell. Now, drolocytes move slower uh, than the other core species. And I've hypothesized that this is largely due to the fact that they lack a um, they lack a skeletal structure. Uh, so, you know, the fact that we have a skeleton actually gives us a lot of leverage when we're running and walking. And uh, so, this is my this is my thinking. Now, in the game, drolocytes are slower, but if you had a mixed party uh, traveling together the drolocytes can keep up with the faster pace that the rules set for a mixed party. It, you know, it just, it just says that they're able to keep up. It's kind of like uh, that scene in two towers where it's uh, Gimli and Legolas and Aragorn, and they're, they're chasing the orcs to try to catch up with the orcs that took Merry and Pippin. And uh, you know, Gimli's, like, you know, dwarves, we're, we're natural sprinters. We're wasted on cross country, you know, and, and he's just desperately trying to keep up. It, it's just that whole idea of this guy is pushing himself to keep up. And I think that's what's going on with drolocytes with a mixed party. Now, if it was a, a, a full party of just drolocytes, not a mixed party, uh, they would move slower. So uh, that's the, uh, the thing on movement. Uh, the appendages 
can be grown and absorbed in 10 minutes. So you can absorb an appendage in five minutes and then grow a new one to replace it in five minutes. So if you had three legs, but you wanted that, you know, you could generate only five limbs, but you need a third hand to help hold the flashlight while you're working doing tech stuff, uh, you'd have to absorb a leg. And, you know, it would take 10 minutes. This is not something that's going to happen during a combat round. Uh, 10 minutes is the length of a uh, uh, Nighthawk's turn. The combat round is only six seconds. So, you know, this is not going to happen during combat. This is something for out of combat. Uh, Drolocytes absorb oxygen through their skin. Their skin doubles as, a, uh, as their lungs, they, or, or at least how they take the oxygen in. Um, so normal, you know, the, the normal drolocyte state is that they, you know, clothes are optional. They do wear work-related clothes. They do wear defensive suits. And we assume that due process has been made to, you know, that the drolocyte's not going to suffocate. Uh, so, you know, they do wear clothing. They don't have to. Uh, reproduction is by spores and budding. Uh, there is no stigma for a career-oriented drolocyte, you know, leaving their offspring with their social structure uh, for the social structure that they have to raise it. Uh, there's been some development on what does what is the drolocyte society like, and uh, one of the things that we came down against was we did not want to have a nuclear family like like humans do. So uh, we came up with, uh, under fan canon, the social schools or the STOA. And uh, these social schools uh, in the STOA, they're, they're kind of centered around a theme. And you could can kind of compare that to, like, here in modern day, we have the VFW, uh, the American Legion, the uh, Freemasons, the uh, Knights of Columbus. Um, there was an Italian veterans uh, club in East Boston when I lived there. So yeah, there's, there's all these, um, you know, different clubs and you can kind of equate them to the social school, the STOA. So the drolocytes would have similar, you know, things where there's, it's kind of centered on a particular interest and a drolocyte will be a member of a number of these clubs. Like, you know, you could be in the VFW and be a Freemason. It doesn't, you know, one doesn't prevent the other type of thing. So a drolocyte can be a member of a number of these uh, social schools. And this is the, this is the place where uh, their, this is their family, this is their social structure, their social supports. Uh, so, you know, a, a career or oriented drolocyte that has weaned the bud that is, that is dropped off and now the bud is, you know, running around uh, beginning to learn to speak and so on can be left with a social school and it will be raised, and, and that's not a problem. Now, uh, oh, uh, one more thing. The drolocyte is his own, his own life vest. They can inflate their body, take air into their body, and they don't need a life vest because they will then be buoyant from the air pockets. They've, but they need to prep, and this takes 10 minutes. So if they're dropped in the water and they've not prepped with air pockets, then they have a problem. Well, then they're going to have to swim. But uh, otherwise... They are their own life vest. Now, drolocyte society, uh, there are three aspects to drolocyte society that stand out uh, to other species. And that is one is debate, philosophy, and corny humor. But all three of these are actually connected in the drolocyte psyche. Uh, <clears throat> so the true bedrock of their society is the social school, as I mentioned, uh, social school is where all the rites of passage of a drolocyte's life take place. You know, uh, offspring rearing, caring for the elderly, as well as rites of adulthood for the determining of your place in society. The social school is where a drolocyte will first gain his voice. So the first time a young drolocyte steps into the circle of debate, um, that's, that, that's celebrated as the gaining of voice. And uh, then there comes a point where you demonstrate that you're a mature uh, adult and you take the stand. And that's where you go into the circle of debate and you've got to debate all comers. 
And so you're, it's not expected that you're going to come out of that with um, all of your tenets of your personal philosophy intact. You might actually change or modify things, and that's okay. That's accepted. Um, but, uh, you, you know, you've got to take the stand. Uh, now, the uh, debate is normally held in the circle of debate, and this can be done anywhere. This is, uh, they have uh, part of the architecture at the social school uh, uh you know, allows for this. There'll be a, a circu circular arena with bowl-like depressions all around it for the draw the sites to uh, lounge in. And so they have a circle of debate, but you could be in the marketplace and they draw a circle on the ground or a, just a, an audience forms a ring and that would be considered the circle of debate and debate would happen there. So uh, part of the uh, historic debate has involved things like weaving humor into your into your philosophy and into your debate and uh sometimes tangling as which is the drolocyte art uh, sport and art form of wrestling has been a part of debate so uh, all of these things kind of weave together now in the modern uh frontier uh tangling is a full-on sport in its own right uh, separate from debate and debate has become a full on sport for drama sites. So I, you know, I remember when I moved to England and I, and I saw the, the sports that were broadcast on English TV. Cause you know, you're used to, uh, you know, football, baseball, hockey, basketball, and you go there and they have dart throwing. <laughs> That's a sport. You know, you know and another time you go down, you turn on the TV, and it's Shetland pony racing. So you've got these jockeys that like dwarf the freaking ponies, you know, and, and the ponies are jumping over stuff. And the guy is, you know, because the, the guy's on this little tiny animal, he's kind of like weird bouncing through. It was just weird, you know, and snooker. You're like, I get, I get pool. I've never gotten snooker. You know, <laughs> it's just weird stuff. So, uh, with the drolocytes, they have this weird wrestling art form that does it's it's kind of like wrrestling but they call it tangling they have uh, debate as their own sport and so this kind of makes them fun this makes them a little bit different and then you have this corny sense of humor that they weave in and so it's very uh slightly like um, Monty Python um, Abbott and Costello um, you know slapstick kind of uh, corniness, dad joke level of corniness. And uh, this this is all part of their whole psyche in how they how they view things. Issue number one, if I click on issue number one, I get this page. This is an actual web page. Now you see right here PDF version and online. This is what I want to point out. You all know about PDFs. But these early Frontier Explorer magazines, they're all online, all the content as an individual link. So each article is an individual link and the content is a web page. And this is just handy. Sometimes you want to pull up a specific article on your page. So I just wanted you to be aware of this capability that you had. Now, um, when we first started, we endeavored to put all the content online um, after a while. <laughs> It got to be a bit much, uh, and we just slacked off, and so it's just the PDF. So, um, but in the early days of the Frontier Explorer, you have this online content, and it's handy. So the Drolocyte Creed, this was a collaboration. Now, my fingerprints are all over it, but a lot of people actually collaborated on this. I don't even know if I got the writing credit for this. Um, so uh, we wrote a creed. It's got three points to the creed. Very straightforward. Then we did these five appendages. These are kind of like sacraments uh, of the belief. You know, you could kind of look at them as like Roman Catholic sacraments, really. Um, you know, that's that sort of thing. Uh, so these, and you know, you have these five appendages, and these are. For the most part, they are rites of passage in a Drolocyte's life. And then you have, have some fluff here, Conversations of Maul Gideon. And uh, somewhere I thought there was a Conversation of Maul uh, Woosh, but I don't see that here. So I'll have to go looking for that. But uh, Conversations of Maul Gideon, uh, uh, excuse me, Maul Gedon, Maul Gedon. 
Um, this was obviously written by me. You know, these are uh, a mall is uh, somebody who's recognized as uh, like a guru, a teacher, an elite philosopher, an elite debater, uh, even an elite comedian to that. Because these conversations, they're philosophical, they're irreverent, they're, you know, they're even a little humorous. So uh, this is a whole article just on the Drolocyte Creed. Uh, it was put out there for us. We we're never told what it was. And so some gamers collaborated and worked on this. Uh, for your benefit, and that is Star Frontiersman number one. Star Frontiersman number, uh, excuse me, that's Frontier Explorer number one. This is Star Frontiersman number 15, one of my favorite issues, actually. Um, you've got the article in here, The Opiate of the Asakar, and uh, it was written by me, and the, the title comes from the classic quote that religion is the opiate of the masses, which I believe was uh, Joseph Stalin, I think, who said that. And uh, so in here, you've got three religions. One of them's the Drolocyte religion. That's the, the fluid, the fluid guys. Uh, they practice fluidism. And it's a very, um, it's a pantheistic. They believe the spirit of the Dawes in all living things. And so they try to connect with it through, uh, you know, good living and through uh, meditation. And they practice two forms of meditation. One is the stillness. And that's your classic, you know, emptying your mind and just kind of, you know, calm focus. You know, instead of going, oh, they do the, Dah, you know. Anyhow, uh, and then they have the meditation that is the flow. And the meditation that is the flow is a martial arts kata. So every, um, not everyone who joins fluidism actually knows martial arts, but eventually they will learn it as a, as a fluid, as a practicer of fluidism. So we created this fun little religion for, uh, for Drolocytes, and this is a potential for your character, and it's in Star Frontiersman 15 under uh, Opiate of the Asakar. Also in here is a great article by uh, Eric Windsor, um, who wrote uh, about Drolocyte debate. And so that's a great article in here. It was one of the first um, you know, fan endeavors to try to tackle Drolocyte society a little bit and pick it apart. So this is Tom, a.k.a. Gerion, the Star Frontiers gamer. Uh, we've, we've covered uh, the big high points. You know, the, I've, I've kind of pointed you to the, the major articles on Drolocyte society, on the creed, on an obscure small faction type religion called fluidism, uh, and the uh, article on Drolocyte debate very helpful. And uh, we have the new player primer, which was in uh, Frontier Explorer number 21. That was basically the script for this, uh, for this video. And, uh, and then of course you want to refer to the uh, one page, you know, species write up in the rule book. It's actually very good. Gives you, you know, it's actually probably better. I think it's better. I mean, people have been like, eh, I don't know. Listen, just read that. It's it's good. It's good. It, it gives you everything uh, in there. But there's been some elaboration by fans, and so we've tried to point you in that direction as well. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. And I will see you in the frontier.